Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff is with me uh, alongside Tam McManus. I've just noticed this is day three of Ruffy wearing that jumper. You no, have I'm a correct you. no, I'm correcting you. You're not going to tell me you bought a batch of four of that no, type of jumper. You, don't, you, had, you had it on a Wednesday when I was here. You this. This is a trial of viewers. Yeah. Uh, you've noticed that. I was wondering if anybody had noticed this because this is the fifth day that I have worn this jumper. <laughs> that is a test, yeah. In a row, it's a test of the viewers to see yeah. uh, if they're actually Jakey. walking the show. Jakey. Yeah, absolutely. You need to have that money he's got on I know, by the way, he's down to his last half a million. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, great to have Ruffy here uh, in quarantine uh, and also Tam as well. We've got lots to talk about, uh, including, of course, uh, last night's performance from Rangers. We'll hear from Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. We'll also hear from Ange Postecoglou, Graham Alexander, talking about the Scottish Cup quarterfinal ties. Uh, we will uh, ask Tam about this. Uh, well, is it a campaign of people looking for Hibbs and Sean Maloney to fail? We'll get Tam's thoughts on that as well. Uh, but also, uh, the big news is here at uh, the football show, we've got the Scottish Junior Cup semi-final draw sponsored by Indigo Communications. Of course, Indigo Communications, the sponsor of our programme as well, but uh, they sponsored the Scottish Junior Cup. And earlier today, Tam Cowan joined me uh, to conduct the semi-final draw. Welcome to the PLZ Soccer Studios. We're getting ready for the Scottish Junior Cup semi-final draw. Uh, I'm delighted to say Tam Cowan is here with me, Peter Martin, to help with the draw. But before we get to the big draw, I'm delighted to say, Tam, that the uh, Scottish Junior Cup is now going to be sponsored by one of our main sponsors, Indigo Communications. It's going to be the Indigo Communications Scottish Junior Cup, which is great news for uh, the juniors. Excellent. When it comes to communications, Indigo goes my number one <laughs> that's, fa that's <laughs> right, fantastic you couldn't get any better I'll than that, for you? 15 quid <laughs> absolutely um, so uh, here's the Scottish Junior Cup draw now the good news is uh, at the weekend it's going to be the quarterfinals so all the teams involved will know exactly what's at stake for the semi-final draw so we have uh, to make sure here we've got four numbers in here and I'll enlighten you of exactly what teams are associated with each number uh, number one is Dice Juniors or Yoker Athletic Number two is Kirkintillock Rob Roy or Arthurly. Number three is Largs Thistle or Peters Hill. Uh, and number four is Shots Bonacord or Auchinleck Talbot. So a lot of big names in there, Tam, with a great history in the Junior Cup. Crackers, uh, Shots uh, Bonacord, Katrina Shearer, the lovely former report in Scotland uh, presenter, that's her team. Hometown team. Yeah, fantastic. So she says. Yeah. Well, she was known to wear a pair of uh, staunch brown stilettos. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> uh, only time could get that into the Junior Cup draw, but fantastic nonetheless. So uh, it's the Scottish Junior Cup sponsored by Indigo Communications. We're delighted that they are backing the Junior Cup. The semi final, good luck to all the teams. You now know what's at stake. I'm going to draw the home team, and Tam is going to draw the away side. So uh, let's kick it off and. The first number out is number four, and that is Shots Bonacord or Auchinleck Talbot. So number four is the home team and the away team for you, Tam, if you can draw the number. Okay, in we go for Indigo. Yeah. That could be the slogan. <laughs> number 15 quid. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, number two. Number two is Kirkintillock, Rob Roy or Arthurly. So that's uh, the draw for the first of the semi-finals. It should be fairly straightforward now. Everybody knows that number three, and number three is Largs, Thistle or Peters Hill. And Tam, you should have it fairly there straightforward. Went. There we go. Number one is number one and they will face uh, Dice Juniors or Yoker Athletic. So uh, good luck to all the teams at the weekend in the Scottish Junior Cup sponsored by Indigo Communications. The quarterfinals, we now know who awaits you in the semi-final draw. You know exactly what's at stake. My thanks uh, to Tam Cowan for helping with the draw and uh, good luck to all the managers and the teams involved in it. It's the Scottish Junior Cup semi-final draw with Indigo Communications. 
Oh, did I get any better than that? I think I mentioned the sponsor about 42 times, Ruffy, so that keeps the old Junior Cup team happy on it. What do you make of that draw? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great draw for, obviously, everybody that stayed away from Ockham Lake. <laughs> 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 uh, Ockham Lake are the favourites. I mean, the history they've got in that cup is superb, and now they've moved it onto the real Scottish Cup. So, uh, yeah, I think everybody in that draw will know that uh, they're the favourites, but a lot of Dice Juniors and that, you know, we, when I was at Glen Arthur in 1996, we played them. They'd just started, and I think we beat them 7 or 8 nothing. but just shows you how, how much they've come on in the trophy and then how much as a club they've uh, got better. Yeah, absolutely. Maxie won't be happy. No, Craig Young said to me this morning, do not draw us out against Hockenlet. And obviously I still get by their tie, but Peter Sill, what an opportunity for them. That's another one of my local teams. Uh, Springburn boy so they've got a chance to get into the final for the first time in a long time yeah absolutely okay I'm going to read out uh, quite a few um, messages that have come in because if you download the PLZ Soccer app you can actually post a message to us and we'll read it out on the programme as well you can actually record a video message as well and uh, we could put it on the programme send you something nice uh, okay quick one here uh, it says can you ask Ruffy why Willie Orman didn't select him for the 74 World Cup squad I remember Harvey Stewart and Thompson Allen what happened? It was between me and Jim Stewart. Uh, I think it was just a straight choice. I think Jim had been playing more under-23 games than me, and uh, he just got selected. Uh, Plus he had bigger hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Biggest hands I've ever yeah. seen in a human yeah. being. It's incredible. You could actually just crush your head. <laughs> it was huge. Great yeah, lad. Him about him. Yeah. Conte, get just this other one here from Martin. He says, well done to Rangers on the 3 0 win versus Red Star. He says, I'm a Celtic fan. Uh, I live in Germany. I'm lucky enough to say that without worrying about getting my windows panned in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've managed to locate you, Martin. We'll be around there shortly. Um, also, Stan says, hi guys. I just watched the Red Star game on Rangers TV here in New Zealand thought the boys were magnificent in all departments a bit lucky with the penalty as Kent had lost control but we'll take it shows that VR can still be debatable um, hope the McGregor knockers are back under their rocks still the best keeper in Scotland uh, so there you have it um, loves the show keep up keeps us all the expats in touch with uh, football in an accent we can understand so that's a nice little yep. uh, touch there so to the game itself um well, first of all, here's how the uh, results all panned out in the Europa League uh, with Rangers with that 3-0 win over Red Star Belgrade. Uh, elsewhere, it was Seville 1, West Ham 0. Uh, Leipzig, Spartak, Moscow was cancelled. Braga 2, Monaco 0. Atalanta 3, Leverkusen 2 and Barcelona 0. Galatasaray 0. And, and first and foremost, we've got to start off and just say absolutely magnificent result time for Rangers. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, I said on Wednesday that I thought they would win the game comfortably. I thought yeah. they would beat them home and away. I think Rangers are they're made for European football, particularly when teams come and they have a go, and that team had a go. I mean, I don't think it was a 3-0 game. I thought that flattered Rangers, if I'm being honest. I think a lot of fine lines you know, in, in football. You know, <clears> missing <throat> the penalty kick was a huge moment as well, but Rangers will take it, 3-0 up. I think that's a tie done. I think they'll go over there, they score, then they'll go through, but... Fantastic for Scottish football, fantastic for the coefficient. You know, as we spoke about the other day, I think Serbia has run about us in the in the coefficient. You know, go over there, hopefully finish the job off. But magnificent the atmosphere last night at Ibrox was sensational as well. The fans getting behind the team and I hope they'll maybe um play the Europa League theme tune before their game at the weekend because they seem to come alive in this tournament. Yeah, well listen, I, I don't think anybody would want any kind of draw against Rangers if they were to get past mm -hmm. Red Star. I also think, like Tam, and I mentioned it prior to the game, Ruffy, that I thought Rangers would win uh, this one um, tighter than it actually ended up. I'm surprised by the 3-0 scoreline, but I think I think they've got a great chance of going through now. Now at 3-0, uh, you, you can see them going away from home. You know, Rangers have been very good away from home. You know, I would be absolutely gobsmacked if they lost that 3-0 uh, uh, lead going over there. 2 nothing might have been a wee bit nervy. I think they showed that they can score goals if, if you're on side. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I think if you're sitting in that Rangers dressing room after the game and also the supporters on the way home, more than happy with 3 nothing. Yeah, more absolutely. Than happy. So let's, let's look at the incidents. Um, three goals chopped off from Red Star Belgrade. Were they all legitimately chopped I off? I think they were all just off. Uh, I think that's VAR at its best. You know, when you're getting tight decisions and you're getting them correct, I think Rangers were lucky. I don't think they were playing for offside. I just think the Boyd maybe made his run a little bit early. The, the, his first finish, the first goal, was some finish. McGregor got away with one when he came out and missed the ball. So I, I think Rangers got a wee bit fortunate. They also get fortunate for the penalty. For me, it's not a penalty. It's never a penalty kick. I thought Ryan Kent 
lost control of the ball and ran into the boy's leg. Um, so that's where VAR for me has got to, you know, you've got to see that. You've got to, I, I can't believe VAR had a look at it and gave the penalty, to be honest. But Rangers will take it. Tavern there, suck it away, what a penalty, top corner. I mean, Rangers get the two early goals, you never thought there were any, any danger. I know Red Star by great chances in the second half, had a lot of possession, but Rangers were comfortable. Could have scored a couple of more the last minute. Balogun with the header. I mean, if that goes in, it's, it's sending the B team over. Yeah. So, no, I thought Rangers thoroughly deserved to win it. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, Ruffy, I don't know about you, but there are some guys who take penalties and the, the, the research into penalty kicks is, <coughs> and you as a goalkeeper would, would be looking at this, if you can get it up to a level that's... Keepers usually dive that yeah. way, and if you can get it up to a level, um, you know, 75% height, then mm -hmm. more often than not, you're going to get... It's riskier. It's, yeah. riskier. it's risky, but yeah. the keeper's no chance. toiling. But he's got it into oh, the posting. Unsavable. Uh, unsavable. His, his heart must have been in his mouth for a wee while. <laughs> uh, I, I, looks cool. thought, I thought it was going higher than, <laughs> than what it was, but it was right in the corner. Uh, it was When you see it, you know, if he actually really meant it, he'd go in where it went, and it was an incredible uh, penalty kick. Yeah, it, it was. It was absolutely <coughs> a top drawer. Of course, uh, listen, there was chances which which I think, you know, you, you only have to listen to uh, the Rangers manager, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. He said, OK, 3 nothing, but hey, this is only half time. I think we did well. I think especially the second half was... I think we did well. I think especially the second half was, uh, was going uh, really well. We had to change... You know some tactics in in halftime, and I think uh, that worked out really well. So um, you know I'm really happy. You know uh, to to go to Belgrade next week, which is going to be hard. I think the same, uh, maybe harder than today. So, uh, but we have a um, we have a three goal difference. We we take with us, but uh, you know this this tie isn't over yet. Yeah, uh, just a note of caution, and rightly so, from uh, Van Bronckhurst there. It, they got a penalty. Was it a penalty in your mind, Ruffy? Uh, Rangers penalty? Yeah. The same with Tam? No, I agree with everything Tam yeah, said. Yeah, you, you agree with yeah, that? I well? thought yeah. he stumbled and he put his... It's not the first time I've seen strikers doing it. You know, they know they've lost control and they see a foot out there and they just say, right, well, I'll, I'll touch that and see what happens. Uh, but you take it. Uh, if it's one of your teams, you, you take it. You know, if it was on the other end... I'm sure you'd probably be complaining about it. Yeah, and, and a word for Morelos. 32 goals in the Europa League. It's it's great going for him. Oh, superb. Again, another player who totally suited to European-style football. You know, in the first five, ten minutes, he <laughs> nearly put that boy into Glasgow Cross, you know, with the shoulder <laughs> barge. You know, too strong for him. You know, set his stall up early, aggressive. And that's when Morelos is at his best. You know, he's a wee bit of feistiness. He's aggressive, worked hard, got his goal, great finish. Um, he's been an absolute talisman for Rangers over the over the last three or four seasons. He's been brilliant in Europe, and again, there's got to be clubs taking notice of that. Not just his two performances against Dortmund, but again last night he was outstanding. Yeah, can you do me a favour, by the way? There is actually a block. We've got an injunction against anybody suggesting that Morelos is going to get a transfer. <laughs> Tam, can you calm your jets? It's going to happen someday. Uh, well, he'll have a testimonial. He'll, Rangers, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be he'll be about forty <laughs> by the time he decides to leave Glasgow, Ruffy. No, he's a changed man. You know, we we'll, we'll saw him when things aren't going particularly well. The head's down, he just you know, no looks happier, doesn't he? And it, it, it yeah. looks as if he's enjoying walking onto the park mm. now because he knows he's he's got the chance of scoring goals. And I will tell you, when you're a goal scorer, you just love scoring goals. Yeah, you know, you can see that in him now. He's, he, he's more than happy, you know, to be part of the team rather than an individual. What are you looking at him for? Oh, he's scored a few goals in his yeah. team. How many goals did you score in your career, Tom? I don't know, but 90 odd. 90? And how many games? Oof. 300 odd, 400 odd. Yeah. I wasn't prolific. No. No. Okay. Um, but you had other qualities, uh, to be honest with you, um, off the field. Uh, anyway, apart from apart from that, thanks to so many people who are putting messages up here. Uh, Brian Roberts says, as a Celtic fan, I don't think Rangers need to fear anyone. I think it's a I think it's a good point that he makes. Uh, and also, a lot of people saying Rangers hammered them. I mean, the atmosphere was sensational, uh, and Rangers really did a job on them. And I mean, you can uh, sometimes I think you can tell when a team's up for it, uh, mm -hmm. Ruffy. You know, they've got the bit between Teams. the teeth. The atmosphere's there. You know, you're willing them on. Games turn on goals and, and big moments, you know, and we're going to hopefully talk about Alan McGregor, you know, at 2 nothing, you know, that penalty goes in, yeah. you know, it's 2-1, you know, that shows you how important, 
he is to that team. He makes the saves that give them a chance to get the third one. Uh, and that's what he did last night. An absolutely amazing save. Yeah, Dan says, I'm a Hibs fan and I genuinely wanted Rangers to lose. Um, but what a result. Say anything you want. 3-0, it's a dream result for all Rangers fans. Well, at least Dan's being honest about it. We try and, uh, you know, give a fair reflection of as many people as possible. Um, Will says, I thought Morelos would leave a few times, but why would he? He's paid well. He's uh, breaking records. He's loved, settled. Why move on uh, to Porto's bench and just be another player? Well, maybe these things, you know, you take into consideration so many aspects of uh, you know the interest that's been uh, towards the player and quite simply sometimes it's not enough money for the club to want to part with them um, but seems happy scoring goals and also Bob White has actually mentioned something here he says Red Star crumbled that's their first defeat in 16 games so yet again I think the the, the, the good thing to point out here uh, Ruffy is we highlighted there's no point in anybody saying Dortmund had an off time Rangers over two legs deserved the win and this is another this would be another good scalp I think it's a fantastic scalp and you can we can talk about it and analyse it the goals that they never got and everything but Rangers we've already discussed the penalty but they, they scored for two set pieces you know and set pieces are really important in the modern game just now uh, and they took their chances and, and at 3 nothing. I, I think anybody in the Rangers team would have taken 3 nothing before the game and in, in two or three days we're not going to be talking about the three offside goals they got or anything they're going to go into the next leg 3 nothing up and surely defensively they're good enough to see this game out yeah absolutely um, the other results there of course Seville 1 West Ham 0 uh, David Moyes reckons when they return to uh, London for the return leg um, it's going to be something special for the fans to cheer about. I think if I think in football, I'm always looking for uh, where I can pick up. You know, who's do, who's got the best, who does the best. Well, you know, we should at West Ham look to see how well they've done it at, at Seville tonight because the the crowd were great. Crowd drove them on incredibly well in the second half, and uh, and probably got them over the line. I think so. We need our crowd to do the same at, at the London Stadium. And they will do, because we'll give them something to shout about next week. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting game as well, because Seville are the Europa League specialist, Tam. And the strange thing about it is the final. <laughs> Seville, is it Seville and Rangers. If you want to have a look at the odds, here's the odds on Rangers going all the way. I mean, in life, Ruffy, can you... 14 to 1 Rangers to go all the way um, to win it. Barcelona eleven to four, Leipzig nine to two, Seville five to one, Atalanta eight to one, Leon twelve to one, fourteen to one. And by the way, I mean you would not. I mean, if you to say to anyone, you know, you'd have you'd live through a life where you'd have three nine in a row, Ruffy, uh, two of them getting to a UEFA Cup final, both of them have won European trophies, and then suddenly after the the madness of the Celtic fans with Seville Rangers, mm -hmm. can they go all the way? Yeah, I think the only worry I would have would be the team underneath them, Leon. You know, we saw what they did to Rangers. You know, I thought they were they were very technically magnificent, but they're in there now. Some of the other teams are not big, big teams, uh, and the way the Rangers are playing in Europe just now, they'll be taking scalps. You know, and any team they get drawn against will look at the the Dortmund game and look at hopefully that game once the second leg's over and say, hey, if we get drawn against this team. We have to be up for it. Yeah, absolutely. could you see them going all the way? It depends on the draw, I think, for me. I think they'll get through this tie, and they're obviously in the last eight. Um, I think you'd be wanting to kind of avoid Barcelona, Seville. I think Seville will beat West Ham. Barcelona, everybody's favourites, 2 0 0 at home to Galatasaray last, last night. So they're not guaranteed to go through, they've got to go to Turkey and get a result. So, listen, it could really open up for Rangers. You know, you could have one or two big guns going out in this round, and uh, it could open up, but. Listen, I can see them getting the semi-finals and then from then you never know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, OK, thanks to everyone for their messages on um, how they think it's all going to go. Uh, it's all about opinions. We'd like you uh, to offer your opinion on the football and we appreciate that. Uh, and don't forget, if you get a chance, uh, share the stream, tell everybody we are exclusively on YouTube now. If you hit the subscribe button, you'll be part of the football family. Uh, and of course, we hope you stay part of the football family on the basis of talking about football, which we all love to do. Um, so, Scottish Cup quarterfinals, just before... Before we get into the meat and bones of where we think these are going to go, who's going to win and everything, and, and some of the news from the managers, here's the fixtures um, 
for the weekend spread over uh, Saturday, Sunday and Monday Hearts against St Mirren Motherwell against Hibs and then on the Sunday also Dundee against Rangers and then the Monday it's Dundee United against Celtic so that's how the quarterfinal draw looks uh, interestingly enough Sean Maloney's come out uh, this, is, this is an interesting one um, which basically I don't think Maloney's happy with some of the, the media treatment of uh, the team and possibly himself as well. This is what Sean had to say with regards to some of the criticism. Um, I do feel there's a lot of negativity, not from our fans, um, but just outside the club towards us and towards me. I get the feeling they're quite happy for us and me not to achieve. I, I hope the fans see maybe a bit more uh, than they read or hear from certain media quarters because I feel that has an impact. I know there has been positive things and less positive things uh, and I very rarely or never hear uh, that we're doing well. Uh, I just get the feeling from outside and not from just me uh, but also the club uh, that some people are happy for Hibs not to do okay. Um, well, if I was Sean Maloney, I wouldn't give you know, two hoots to the noise. He's got a job to do. He's got transfer windows where he'll get to change the team gradually into his own. Why is he biting? I don't know, it's a little bit naivety for me, uh, that one there, you know, having a pop at people in the media. The, the bottom line is Hibs have won one in the last 10 games. You know, they've had three uh, nil-nils in a row. They've not scored in 8 to 10 games. And that is, that's a fact. That's no me having a go at anybody or anybody else having a go. Yeah. You're stating the facts. The positives are they're not conceding goals, you know, but the negatives are they're not scoring goals. So he's also got 11 or t uh, 10 or 11 players out, which I've got to take into consideration. But if I was Sean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. You know, I'd just get on with my own job, get my head down, try and create a siege. Maybe he's trying to do that. Maybe he's trying to create a siege mentality within Hibs. Listen, they are out to get us, out to get me. Um, maybe he's trying to create that. But myself personally, I, I really, really hope Sean does well. Uh, I hope Hibs do well because I think I was the one of the first people to mention him for the job on this show. So yeah, you are. I would yeah. like to be I would like to be proved right to be honest. I'd like him to go and do well. And there's obviously certain people that's maybe getting under his skin. So I, I don't know, but I think he's he's got to ignore that, ignore the noise and just and just get on with the job and just get on with getting results. Yeah, it was a good shout from you that time because nobody actually mentioned you. You come out of left field with it because I know Ruffy had said, you know, he's been you've been on two years and you've given us absolutely nothing, uh, and, and and I think he just saved the day, yeah. Ruffy, because you wanted him out yeah. for Foster. <laughs> <laughs> Nepotism. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the only thing that Sean Maloney should be worrying about is his own supporters. Yeah. You know, get your own supporters to buy into what you're doing. You know, and if they turn on you, then you've got a problem. But everybody outside. Yeah, you shouldn't be taking any heed of them at all. You should just be getting in there. And, and I, I do, I, in my opinion, I think it's difficult for old firm players to go into other clubs. To, what? To, buy, to get fans to buy over. You know, there are, there are doubters out there because they maybe played against you or whatever. Yeah, I've seen it. I seen no. It, I've seen it with Gary Caldwell, you know, when he came to us that he had to actually get a, a large bit of the support because of where he came from. Yeah, oh. well, that's just my opinion. Yeah, well, listen, I mean, at the end of the day, it's your opinion. I'm, I'm gobsmacked by that statement, Ruffy. Not that, you know, listen, uh, it's your take on it. My uh, point of view, uh, Tam, on Sean Maloney is, he's got 11 players out. Mm. You know, there's guys like, I mean, Joe, Joe Neal, for me, uh, actually makes them tick. He's like a, he's not the same level of player as Callum McGregor, but he, he picks that ball up and he shifts it and he moves it quickly. They look pedestrian at times in the middle of the park at the moment. The other thing about it, if Sean's getting criticised, people are criticising because that's that's her job to watch the game and offer an opinion on. If they're poor, they're poor. It's not because there's any great desire for Sean to fail. It's uh, the, the better journalists look and say, OK, the bigger picture is he's got a good amount of time mm. to try and do it. Unless you're Stephen Glass and you, you know a lot of people just looked and went, this isn't working. No, I, I think that in, in terms of Sean, you're right, he's got so many players out. I think you've got to give, and I always say it in a show, you give managers two windows, you know, and I think when Sean gets another window in the summer, I think you'll see a, a vast improvement in the team. I think he's got to go and improve the forward areas. That is a problem for Hibs at the minute. You know, that's nobody having a pop or being critical. They're struggling to score goals, you know, three nil nils in a row. So that's that's the part of the, you know, the pitch that they've got to try and get improvement and get better quality in. But 
I don't think I don't think there's a lot of uh, uh, if any pressure on Sean Maloney at the minute. I don't. I think he's doing yeah. well. He's doing okay in the circumstances. The players have got out. He's got, he's trying to bring young boys in who maybe not ready. But once he gets his players back, his stronger players back, <coughs> his regulars, then I think the Hibs will be Hibs will be fine next season. Yeah. Um, listen, the other thing about it, Ruffy, is he, he wants to play a certain style of football, which I think is something that the Hibs fans will embrace. I hope he does well. Well, if you're going to play a certain style of football. Whatever that is, you need the players that can play that style of football. You know, we've saw yeah. it before, the building up for the back, and you've got guys who are not comfortable on the ball. So, Tom's right. If that's the kind of style, his style he wants to play, he needs to identify the players to come in to that set up uh, and do everything he wants them to do. Here's a bit of bad news, Nesbitt, seven to nine months. What a blow that is for him. Yeah, I knew straight away. And, you know, I can tell as, a, as an ex player, ex striker, you know, as soon as he, that tackle went down, he was, he was shouting for the bench. You know, and that's a that's a sickener for him. You know, he was actually coming back onto a game. You know, I've been critical at times this season, but over the last three to four weeks before he got injured, he was working his backside off. Yeah, he wasn't getting the goals. You know, he scored a good goal up at Arbroath, but he was working hard for the team. His link-up play, everything was improving under Sean Maloney. So that'll be a big blow for him. But he's got he's got a chance now to go away, get himself built up. You know, get himself big and strong. You know, and come back a better player. You know, I think there's a, there's a lot of examples of players who've picked up bad injuries and came back better. Um, so hopefully that's the same with Kevin. He's still got a lot of time in his hand. He's still a re relatively young player, so I wish him a speedy recovery. Yeah, everybody knows what's at stake. Quarterfinals, chance to play at Hamden in the semi-finals. Graham Alexander embracing that for Motherwell as they take on Hibs on the Saturday. But, to be perfectly honest with you, um, Graham Alexander's actually thinking, listen, we want to go a, a stage further and then be going up there, those steps to lift that Scottish Cup? Our target, our ambition is is not just to get to Hamden because at the end of the day, four teams get to Hamden. The, the, the target is to, to win a trophy. You know, so that that's um, ultimately what it is. But the you know the next stage is Hamden. Um, but you know, we don't want to build things up that if if we win on Sunday that we've achieved uh, what we we set out to achieve at the start of the competition because that would be wrong. Uh, this is a tough one to call, Tom, because you know Hibbs, uh, you know, went to Fir Park and, and got a, a win three two earlier in the season, right at the start in August. And it was the last result of Fir Park. Oh, it's two draws. It's, it's, no, no. It's, uh, absolutely, and you, you're, you're on a night. You're on a night where you haven't seen a goal in ages. <laughs> I haven't. I was at the, I was at the nil nil game in the league, uh, which was not a great game either. But I'm just hoping there's going to be goals. I'm hoping there's going to be entertainment for supporters. Hibs again travelling big numbers, sold out the full the full stand. Um, they'll be desperate. Listen, it's no, it's just all about getting through. Even if it's nil nil, you win in penalties. Listen, you, get, you just get through into the next round. But it's going to be a tough tie. It's very difficult to call. You know, Motherwell. I don't think they've won a game in the last ten. Hibs one one in ten. So it's two teams knowing the best of form. <coughs> just about who turns up on the day and who takes their chances because I don't think it'll be a lot of goals again. Yeah, I think sometimes people and fans look for a real kick from a manager coming in. You know, Graham Alexander got it earlier in the season when everybody was getting excited about it. Um, he hopes that they've still got something to shout about in the season. I think it's going to be slightly dip more difficult for Sean Maloney because he's asking players that might not be part of his plans Long term, roughly to try and mm -hmm. to try and get them onto that next stage. Yeah, I know. But when you're in the team, you want to win. You want to get to semi-finals. You want to get to finals. Hibs have recently had a good record the semi-finals, uh, and, and that's what the Hibs team will be. You know, all trying to achieve that. You know, and there are new players in there who haven't been in semi-finals. Yeah. So I just think Motherwell are on a slide now. They're not. As I'm saying they've no won a game in what one in ten or something mm. like that. If Hibs can get a couple of goals, and I think they'll win this quite easy. Yeah, quite easily. Two nothing. Yeah. Two nothing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, what I would say about Hibs in recent weeks, and I've been there, they have been so solid at the back. Yeah. You know, starting from the Celtic game nil nil, mm -hmm. then the Dundee game nil nil, and then the weekend nil <laughs> nil. They've oh, been no. very good defensively. It's just in that final third. If, if Hibs score two goals, they'll, they'll get through. For yeah. Me, they'll not concede two. I'm going one nothing Hibs. I'm going to go for 2 nothing Hibs. Is that right? No, 2 yeah, options, I think, I think you guys. Two. I okay. Think 
It's like buses, once they get one, they'll get two. <laughs> yeah, we shall see. <laughs> I'm going to text him if it's nil-nil, oh, no. right into the 85th yeah, minute. Because I was texting you at Den's party the other night. You got to go in the last minute. I know, I couldn't believe it, by the way. I was sitting there thinking, I mean, by the way, don't get me wrong, I don't want it to take it the wrong way. St Mirren played some lovely stuff. Yeah. St Mirren were well-deserving of their win, but you know what it's like up there, Ruffy. You're sitting yeah. there and you're thinking, I've driven all the way here. It's a long drive back, you know, and there's two choices. You go the Edinburgh way or the Stirling way, and you're like... I never, I never got a chance to ask you about that game. What was the reaction at the final whistle for the supporters, the Dundee supporters? Uh, well, I don't think it was... I mean, obviously disappointed. There wasn't a, a there loud wasn't a boo or booing or just due to the fact that I think the one set of fans who'd made the noise and had travelled in great numbers was St Mirren. Uh, St Mirren had fans never stopped singing the whole game. And then, of course, right at the death when Dundee think they've done everything possible. And by the way, they looked shaky. I mean, right across the middle, but the back, middle and front. You know, the boy Ruddin needs a two. He, I don't like him playing up on his own. I don't know if you think he's the up. Only, when he played up his own, the, the one time I've seen him up his own was against Kilmarnock at Rugby Park and he really ragged all the two centre-halves. That might have been a one-off. Yeah. But I, I would agree, if you're going to get the benefit of him, it has to be with somebody beside him. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, uh, so we think Hibs are going to narrowly win. Uh, I mentioned St Mirren, and I, I'll tell you who I really like, Tam, and I mentioned it to Ruffy yesterday. The boy Jordan Jones looks as if he's in the mood again. He's back, settled, somebody maybe putting an arm around him and saying, listen, you, you can show these guys what you're made of. He, he looked good the other night there. I think it's good for him that he's now the main man. You know, I think he's went to Rangers, he was a squad player, he went to, I think he went to Sunderland. Didn't really hit it off. He's back up, I think it's the money he's going to play every week. I think he's, I've seen him against Hibs about four or five weeks ago, thought he was excellent. Looked right back his best, you're right, I think he's got an arm round him. I think he's got somebody that believes in him, the manager, and as I said, he's, he's playing really well. Conor Ronan's another one, who obviously scored the win, the winner the other night. Very good young player, and loan yeah. from Wolves, so... I think St Mirren have got players in the final third that can cause Hearts problems, but I just think Hearts will be too strong. Oh, well, you do? I, mean, I wonder if they'll be too strong with 11 injury worries. He's got 11 players that he's actually going to the wire, wondering if they're going to actually take to the field, even though he says he still thinks he'll get a, a strong team out there. Yeah, but it's always difficult. And the thing I was going to ask you was it Jim Goodwin that brought Jordan Jones to to St. Mum? Yeah, yeah, yep. Aberdeen. I think he's he identify him as a, a new player at Aberdeen. I, I, I listen. I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah. I think you know. I think, I think he's got something to offer. I think Aberdeen need wingers. Mm. I think Aberdeen Pace, need yeah. strikers, and they need uh, creativity in the middle of the park. But first and foremost, they need to go and buy defenders. Yes. Um, and build a spine of a team they ain't got that but in, in this one um, I, I think Stephen Robinson regardless of how many players are out for Hearts on the day um, he thinks the pressure's all on the home side here so maybe uh, St Mirren can cause a little bit of a shock Yeah, Saturday I mean all the pressure's off us Hearts are you know, a huge football club they're expected to win um, they've got a lot of very good players that they pay a lot of good money to so um, all the pressure's off us we can go and enjoy the game and, you know, go with a real positive attitude of, of causing an upset because that's what it would be. Okay, where's your money? I think it'll be extra time. Does yeah. it go extra time or does it go to a replay? No, I think it's extra time with penalties. Is it extra time yeah. penalties? Well, I think it could go all the way, but I think Hearts will just edge it. Yeah. Yep. No, I'm going to go Hearts. I think Boyce and Sims are, are too strong for them. And uh, obviously they're... Hearts are quite strong at the back. It's going to be a great atmosphere at Tyne Castle. Yeah. I think Hearts will win that 2 nothing. Yeah, I'm going 2-1, the Jambos. Um, Dundee Rangers, I I, I mean, I, listen, Mark McGee won't be there. It'll still be Simon Rusk trying to implement the ideas of Mark on this one. It's it's going to be an interesting battle because I look at Rangers, Lundstrom, Aribo are injured, Arfield still unavailable, but I look at Rangers and the squad they have and the you know, some people say, oh, there'll be a fallout from the game against Red Star Belgrade. Even if they're off it, I still think they're going to batter Dundee because Dundee are woeful. Yeah, I, th I tend to agree with that. I think that Rangers have got a massive squad. I think they've got players to come in that are fresh and hungry to do well and try and get into the team for the big European games coming up. So I don't think it'll be a battering. I think Dundee will, will, will maybe hold out for an, about an hour, stay in the game for an hour, but I think in the last 20 to 25 minutes, I think Rangers will be too strong, I think it might end up 2-0 to Rangers. Yeah, strangely enough, and you know what it's like in here, we, we like having a, a noise up with Charlie, um, but you know, guys like McMullen who are good players who can pass the ball, you you really realise the value of Charlie, he's a, he's, he's a 
he's levels above what he's playing with, but he can give that calming influence to them. There's nothing there that suggests, you know, there's some nice intricate passing at times, and then it just breaks down. Mm -hmm. um, he's been a miss for them. Yeah, well, he, he controls the midfield, you know, if you give him time and space and nobody's pressing him, and, and if you can look up, they can see a pass, you can see a pass that other people can't see, you know, and obviously for the front players, that's a benefit, but I, I don't see anybody in there just now that can see that pass, yeah. you know, so I think that's why they're struggling. Yeah, um, OK. Uh, Rangers, I, don't, I can't see any fallout from it. I, I can see the, you know, Rangers winning this by... I'm going to go Rangers to win it 3 nothing. I'll go for 2 nothing. I yeah, think that would be 3 nothing as well. 3 nothing yeah. as well. Okay. Are we doing um, predictions with this? No. No, because obviously if we if we did um, any kind of prediction at the moment, you'd moan and then take out an injunction so against us. No, no, we've done it the, remember, we've done it in the, the Hibs Hearts game. Remember, we've done the predictions two years ago. Did we? Yeah. Yeah, we did. We threw it in. Did I win the, the eventual thing? No, I did. Yeah, well, shut up then. <laughs> <laughs> what are you worrying about? You're gonna, you're gonna stuck it in here because um, I, I'm not saying they're all foregone conclusions, but we've we've gone for Rangers, Hibs, and Hearts. You know, there's no shock so far. No, but I think the, the one we're looking at is Motherwell at Hibs. You know, if, if there was to be, I think it would be there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But Hibs to win. But I still think Hibs will win. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> have you ever tipped anybody this season to beat Hibs? Yeah, I think I have. Have you? Okay, I'll look back over the programmes if I get a spare three hours. Um, Dundee United against Celtic on the Monday. Uh, Celtic have won two and drawn once against United. Uh, they just uh, they just seem to be going through the gears now, uh, Celtic. Uh, I, I get the feeling that they're really at the business end now are, are thinking to themselves, there's two cups up for grabs here and they want to win both of them. Yeah, and you're right, you know, I think they took everybody a wee bit of surprise last week at Livingston, you know, I don't think anybody would thought that would be as easy as what it was, you know, I've already had evidence of playing Dundee United in the, in the Scottish Cup with us, so I wasn't impressed with them at all, but I've said this on numerous occasions, they have the ability to dig out a draw, and when they've got that goalkeeper in for them, making the saves that he makes. You love him, don't I you? I think he's, he's, if you if you looked at all the games he's had with Dundee United, he's been the saviour in every game. He's produced saves that, oh, I don't know how many points he's won for them. So he'll have to be on, on his toes at the weekend. The striking one, you know, I still don't think that uh, Celtic have got that out-and-out -out striker who you could feel confident that he's going to get a goal like Griffiths was playing or, yeah. or whoever. Giacomakis, no? No, I think he'll, unless he improves dramatically, you know, he's a goal scorer, he's a centre forward, you yeah. know, you expect him to score goals, but, you know, you're not looking at him going, he's a certain to the day, I'm going to go into the bookies and put a tenner on him, yeah. you know, he's 5-1, to one, because it'd be, you'd be a wee bit nervous for 90 minutes, <laughs> if he's on the bench particularly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely, I mean, he's banged in seven goals, uh, Tom. Yeah, no, I think he's he's a penalty box striker. He's very much uh, in a Chris Boyd type. You know, he, he plays in the six yard box. We sell to the way they play the wingers. He's going to just all he has to do is make good movement in the box. Yeah, you know, for the for the penalty spot into the six yard box, make movements back or front, and he's going to get chances. And I think he's that type of play. He's not going to take take part in the outside the box. He's not going to come short and spin and play balls wide and all that. He's in the box to score goals. So. I think he's he's a dangerous player. I think Celtic win this comfortably. I, I agree with you. I think they're just starting to... I think if they were going to drop in, it would have been last week at Livingston. But the way they played and the, how comfortable that win was, it was it was encouraging if you were a Celtic supporter to see that and go, right, this team's this team's got the bit between the teeth now for now and the season. Yeah, I'll tell you why the, the, there's a bonus to Celtic at the moment. I mean, obviously there's a big bonus today with the news that Turnbull could be back after the United game in time for the Ross County match. So there's there's another option for Ange Postecoglou. But James Forrest, I think James Forrest is totally and utterly underrated with people. He's come back into the side, um, just slowly but surely getting himself up to the match fitness made his contribution last week as well. He gives them such a, a great option. Obviously, you've got a badder there uh, who can do things in Jota, grabbing all the headlines for all the right reasons. But Forrest, for me, I think, is underplayed. Well, Forrest, like all good players, his record speaks for itself. You know, if you were to look into the goals that he scored, you know, in the time that he's been there, I, I think Celtic have just went down a different way with two direct wingers, two direct wide men. You know, I think James is more of a sort of a, halfway line guy, you know, and getting to the edge of the 18-yard 18, 18 line and then putting a good delivery in. Delivery maybe has been a failing for him, but certainly his goal speaks for itself. 
And you know, he's been there and he's an actual legend at the club. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's been draw, draw, loss and draw for Dundee United. Their form isn't great going into this. That's not fooling Ange Postecoglou though. So they've been, um, you know, been pretty good all year. We've had good games against them, but yeah, you know, irrespective, it's a cup game. So you kind of, all those kind of things become irrelevant. We, you know that in cup games, it, it really comes down to the performance on the day and, and you know, players, oh, you know, I think teams t tend to play with a little bit more freedom in cup games. Yeah, this could be a, an interesting one. I, I like Tanadice as a venue, especially with it's a cup. It's a wee bit of edge about it as well. I loved it. I loved playing there. I had a great record actually scoring against Indy United yeah. uh, for every club that I played there, near enough. And it was, a, it was always a venue I loved playing. I think the crowd's quite tight, isn't you? Yeah. Uh, Is that the venue where you slid down the pole provocatively? Yes, it was. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> that's where I get fined a week's wages. Uh, I think fined a week's wages before it for being the Sunday mail, but we'll not talk about that because my wife's watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, Tanner Dice was, I loved, loved playing there, scored in a Dundee derby up there as well, um, so, no, it's a brilliant place to play, particularly when the away support, I've got the stand behind the goal and the, the other stand, which I, th I think Celtic will have, so, no, a brilliant atmosphere, but I, th I think Celtic will win that comfortably. Yeah, um, okay, I think Celtic are going to uh, win it comfortably as well, Ruffy, I think it could be 3-1. Uh, no, I'm going to go 2-0, yeah. Is 2-0 comfortable? I think you've said 2 every. I think you said 2 0 every score. Absolutely, but the other thing about it is that sometimes he says it's a comfortable 2 0 and then he'll go 2 0 and it's 2 0 is not that comfortable, is it really? Well, if it's 1 0 with five minutes to go, it's no comfortable, but when you get the second goal and there's only two minutes to go, it's comfortable. Okay, write that write that down for Ruffy's explanation of comfortable. The other thing that was interesting, you know, when you get to know managers along the way and you start to see them settling in and a wee bit of their personality coming out. I notice Ange Postecoglou has been doing a few things for some of his uh, Aussie uh, friends uh, on TV uh, and he's also been doing some Q&As as well and he, and he said if he could have one player you know, that he'd like to, to, to get in his side now from Celtic players of the past. He mentioned Jimmy Johnson and sneaked in Kendall Gleish. He says he reckoned he could fit into his system and I thought, well, I can't, I can't see Kenny doing a, a hard press in this game, can you? <laughs> you know? No, but you wouldn't be asking them. No, I was just going to say, look, and just the get these the ten runners, uh, you know, uh, or nine runners and give the ball yeah, to Johnson. Yeah. I saw a bit of that interview. Yeah? Uh, that was uh, over in Australia. Was, they were sitting around a... Yeah, they were talking uh, to him guy, about... One of the guys, just was I don't know if he was a plant, you know, but some of the stuff he was going away with was outrageous. Is that right? No, I think he said something Yeah, like, don't say anything that's outrageous to try and highlight it, Ruffy. No, no, you know? no, yeah. no it's, it's not really that outrageous. I mean, no, he just said to him, I see you've settled in there, has your house not been burnt down yet? Yeah. And you know? You're wondering why would you why would you come out with something like that? Yeah. Well, listen. The thing is, we're going over it's to us. Just a wee joke. Isn't it? It's just a wee joke. <laughs> try not to be too. Listen. Try not to be too. <laughs> I'm talking about. I'm talking about punters being too sensitive and you're being sensitive. Yeah. The other thing about it, Tom, is uh, the good thing is if we go to Australia, which is very much on the cards, um, we will just go over and leather the boy. Uh, find out who it is. Uh, find out where he's from. Great London. Yeah, absolutely. He was head down under. Uh. Yeah. Oh, that'd be oh. fantastic, wouldn't it? I'd be able to go and see my old schoolmate as well. It would be fantastic, Tam. You got any friends down there? Uh, no, no, really, no. No? Uh, Grant Bredner's in Australia. He still owes me money, so I might yeah. be going to see him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, t get a raffle ticket. Um, <coughs> anyway, apart from anything else, <laughs> uh, Scott Brown put out a post uh, just basically thanking the Aberdeen fans. It was on Instagram. Thanking the Aberdeen fans and talking about how welcome they made him feel. Didn't quite work out for him with uh, Stephen uh, getting the sack, and it just wasn't going to be a coaching role. Uh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a nice, classy way for Scott to say goodbye and thank you. I'm, I'm happy it turned out that way. You know, even and with, with Jim Book Goodwin getting in there, they must have had a chat and said, "Look, this is, this is where it is. You can make your mind up what you're going to do." And it, it is moved on, you know, smoothly rather than a big story of, you know, he said this to me and I said that to, 
to him, you know, and uh, I mean, that just shows you the class that the guy's got, and I think we're all waiting and anticipating what his next move is. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, big hi to uh, David who says, is this the Celtic show? Uh, well, David, if you've been on for the full hour, you realise we started talking about the Junior Cup, then Rangers, then the other teams, and we've just finished our discussion on uh, Celtic. So uh, it's always good just to correct people on exactly uh, what we're talking about. And the one thing we're going to talk about now, I love Derby games. Is the Ayrshire Derby uh, going to be something to really look forward to tonight? Is it the type of thing where... It's going to be all blood, blood, guts and thunder. Well, Air United have already went to Kilmarnock and beat them uh, not that long ago. Uh, it's a wee tight park. It'll be full of the gunnels, I would yeah. think. And uh, a personal view, I obviously want Air United to win. Yes. You know, but that's just being selfish. Yeah, but, I was uh, just about to say to you... A draw would be, would be more than acceptable. So, because you've got a game in hand on them, but it's a, <laughs> it's a, it, it's a situation where Kelly can go two points above yeah. a broth. Yes, and both have got a tough game. They're in Inverness. Well, we played in Inverness last week, and uh, they're just going through a wee robbed a one. Uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I would agree with that. I thought they, they were the better team in the the first half. So if, if I'm personal as well, I hope it's an Inverness. <laughs> <laughs> is there any no. is there any balance? No, none you at all. Today, I no? hope they win quite comfortably. To tell you the yeah, um, but this will be a this will be a, a, if our both were to go up and beat them in Inverness, you've got to start thinking about them. You really well, I think we're already thinking I think we are I, I mean really thinking about them if they can go up the Inverness and get a, a win you think that's going to happen? no I think Rob will get maybe a draw at that one yeah um, no, so some game I'm looking forward to it I can't wait to watch you it you're going to watch it? I'm going to watch it on the TV yeah good uh, I love, I love Scottish football you know, my golf now we were talking about the other day the, the four uh, Scottish Cup ties and different days and different times yeah I know a guy who's going to go to the four of them no he's going to go to the four of them he's in neutral he likes the football and he likes everything that goes with it and he's, he's going to try and take the four games in. The four Scottish Cup quarterfinals? Yeah, all the different days and all the different times. And he's managed to get a ticket for them all? Yeah. yeah. That's good going, Tom, isn't it? So you'll need to get his skates on and go from Motherwell up to Dundee. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, good. It's he's, not far. Yeah, oh, he's, he's, he's going some, I have to say. Um, listen, <coughs> the, the, the deciding factor in any derby sometimes is a key player. Lafferty, six goals, I think he's got player of the month. Yeah, it's a name and a team sheet, in it? You don't want, if you're playing against them, you don't want to see him on it because he scores goals. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's a big player, obviously. I big hope he's player. playing tonight. You want to see the big players playing? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think Kelly are going to edge it 2-1. Oh, heart's real in my head here because I've played very United a couple of occasions, but I'm going to go for Kamala to win. Yeah. Yeah, I think come on at my edge, that eh? Yeah, absolutely. The Saturday fixtures, Hamilton Ackies against Infermline, Inverness, as you said, against our broth, Queen of the South Wraith Rovers in your game against Morton down there. You, you're not overly confident, are you? No, uh, no uh, Morton have made it difficult for us. Uh, nothing each down there, and obviously the beaters won nothing, although we did battle them for a while. They've got certain players on that side who cause you trouble. Uh, I just think the capital pitch is tight. Yeah. You know, Evans, you know, you've got to take your chances, but... Uh, we're on a good run. We're on an unbelievable. Tell us what kind of run we're on. What's our defence? I think only Man City have got a better defensive record than Britain and Partick yeah. Thistle. That's good going, isn't That's it? That's fantastic. That is I mean, fantastic. Defensively, yeah, we are very good, but we've, we've just sort of no scoring as many goals as what we were. One goal's not enough for me. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know? Uh, it's been I the play, last two games. But do you know when I play, I play when I'm playing, I, I don't even think about it. I, I have as a director now of the club, if it's tight. I can't watch the last five minutes. Is that right? I can't watch. I have to. I have to leave. I have to go. Is that right? Yeah. Is that because maybe you're thinking somebody's left a couple of pies in there? <laughs> no, no. Is that you get I, just can't handle, I, mean, I just can't yeah. handle it. Yeah, Jim. I, can, right? I cannot handle. Here's a question. Because there's so much at stake. Yeah. You know. Well, it's getting tight now. I can understand that part of it. Here's a quick question for you before we get these other points out, Ruffy. When you go back to Capelo, do you, do, when you walk into that stadium, do you? Mm -hmm. It, does the does the mind flash back to to games that you've played there? Yeah, that particular game was the only <laughs> bad game. The only bad game I ever had at, at Capital. One bad game what, with Capo. Andy Ritchie in the side. Have yeah. a word with no, yourself. You asked Pat Stanton when I went to Hibs. Any time we went to Morton, uh, I was a star man. Was Andy you Ritchie know? playing? Um, no, it started in 80, 82. He might have moved on. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, let's not kid ourselves. Andy Ritchie was a bit special. Yeah, absolutely. saw that goal, Tom, posted that, yeah. against Aberdeen. 
you know, and that's fantastic. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, yeah. It's just for a big guy to have the ability like that is yeah. super. And the other thing about it, which you probably won't be privileged, we've had him on the show more than a few times. I've met him a couple of times. He's a great lad. Fantastic guy, isn't Oh, it? fantastic. Great stories. And he knew a player. Mm. And how nobody, you know, had kept him on at the big clubs as a scout. I'm gobsmacked because he knew a player. Um, so roughly the Scotland friendly uh, is against Poland. It's going to be played at Hamden. Obviously, there's another match that they're going to try and play the losers of the other mm. um, playoff. But... The first one's a friendly against Poland. That'll be a test. March 24th. Uh, yeah, that'll be a test. And let's all hope they bring Lewandowski with them. I think we all want to see the big players. I want to see them. Uh, and I've heard through the grapevine, now they don't quote me on this. Yep. I've heard with the unity that's going on throughout the world just now that uh, Scotland might play in Ukraine colours. What? In a friendly. Is that right? That's an interesting one. Ooh, uh, has, has Ruffy <laughs> produced his first ever scoop live on the show? Honestly, that if is that happens, I'll, I'll tip my hat to you. By something. the way, that's up there with the uh, Sean Maloney aye, for the hips aye. job. Uh, is that right? Somebody's Ruffy? told you that. Who told you? Well, that's what the name of the game's about. By you never reveal your source, Ruffy. Keep, right. keep that quiet. Never reveal your source. That's the name of the game. Can I just say hi to John McShane, who is out in Australia? And he says, Peter, if you guys get over here to Sydney or anywhere in Oz this year, keep me updated. I'll catch up with you guys. Is that the boy you played recent month? For a beer. No. Um, no. No, uh, all John McShane. Yeah, mm. and he's just said he's going to buy us a beer. And Is that all? I hope well. <laughs> <laughs> Ruffy, honestly, I've just turned around and said, just a beer, what about lunch? And he's just sent me a text back saying, from Australia, I'm going to give you the full works. Oh. So that is absolutely fantastic. So if we go there, Ruffy, we're getting the... We're getting the flights now, you might get them cheap. Yeah, oh, it would be fantastic. The only thing is, is it's, it's either Charlie or Foster. Who's yeah. going to give us a, a bit of night? Can um, he beat a kangaroo steak? Oh, are they good? Minty. Yeah, Brilliant. absolutely. The so uh, <laughs> only thing is you're jumping about. <laughs> Honestly, seriously, is that your best? Is that why do you? Came there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> here's the here's the English Premier League fixtures for the uh, for the weekend as well, and there's some uh, humdingers in there, of course. Uh, you look at uh, Brighton against Liverpool. You've got Brentford against Burnley. Um, one of the the one of the ones that I'm thinking about, Man United against Tottenham, Chelsea against Newcastle. <laughs> Listen, it'd be a good time now to buy one of the strips for Chelsea. It could become a collector's item. Um, uh, my gut feeling is, Tam, uh, when I look at all those fixtures and just dealing with Chelsea um, as the main topic of conversation, I think somebody will be allowed to come in and buy them, mm. but not there's there'll be no profit for Roman Abramovich. I think it'll just be a straight sale with him sanctioning it and you're not getting any money. Um, if not, then Chelsea are heading down a very, very dark road. Three, contemplating pulling out of their sponsorship. Nike, which is worth about £540 million. Pounds. There's big companies now seriously thinking about being associated with the brand. Yeah, I think obviously that's with the owner, Abramovich. I think he tried to get out in front of it, didn't he? Early doors. I think he knew it was coming. Yeah. I um, mean, he's tried to get out in front of it. A bit of spin. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. I think you're right. I don't think he's going to make anything. I think he's just going to basically give the club away. Yeah. Uh, and take a hit financially. Um, but I don't think there's any doubt that somebody will come in and, and take that club and take it forward. Yeah, they'll not be um, allowed uh, to play on after uh, a certain date, Ruffy, and unless Abramovich agrees a sale and walks away without a penny. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be somebody out there who'll be interested. I think there's, there's big time money people will be interested. It's just how you do that kind of deal. Well, the yeah. licence runs out May 31st. Yeah, but I mean, that's, Chelsea will always be there. You think so? Through, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah so do Cash I. Cash one your pensions in, no? I think, uh, absolutely, it would be fun. My says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he get, with that, Ruffy, you get a seat at Chelsea, maybe, uh, at a push. Um, nevertheless, um, it, it, it's, it's all down to now when you're looking at the games. I think everybody's casting their eye at the top end anyway for me on... The results at Liverpool and Crystal Palace, Man City on the on the Monday. Suddenly, it's just these two now to see if there's going to be if Man City blink and and lose a game again because then suddenly Liverpool could draw level. Yeah, I don't think I don't think either will, win, will lose many games if any. I think it's all going to boil down to that game at the Etihad. I don't know when that is, but that game, you know, Man City Liverpool uh, at the Etihad. Yeah. I think if Man Liverpool need to go there and win, yeah, win it's the April. League. I think you said the tenth April. Yeah, yeah. 
So all bets are off until then. If anyone slips up, it's going to be exciting. Uh, listen, it's great. Uh, we had the Scottish Junior Cup draw semi-final. The quarterfinals take place this weekend. Good luck to all the teams. They know exactly who they're uh, going to be facing if they can get past their particular opponents this weekend. So good luck to you and let's hope your dream all the way to the final. Ruffy achieved it on three occasions, Ruffy, and then won it in one of them. Three finals in a row, yeah. yeah. Three finals in a row and two semi-finals. Five all in all in. Good coach. Can't believe he didn't make it as a manager and just go on to, to do it full time. Yeah, we've all been overturned, you didn't. Been what a mistake yeah. that is. Yeah, well, to be fair, it's been a joy for us. Ten years together, Ruffy. I didn't want you to. I mean, who needs the money, the fame, the adulation? Yeah. He was well with us. Yeah, it's just good fun coming in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you are. There's enthusiasm for you, isn't it? Uh, thanks to uh, Indigo Communications. They're our sponsors here on the show as well, uh, as well as announcing their sponsorship of the Scottish Junior. Cup so always good to see Indigo staying in football they've got so many uh, deals that they're signing now with uh, the top professional clubs as well but um, big, army, big army's global as well the place isn't absolutely but the reason why he's here with us is because it's the it's the number one show Ruffy because we're quite simply the figures going through the roof on yeah. the YouTube we're getting the subscriptions people are downloading the app now and they know if they download the app they can watch the programme live yeah I think he's very fortunate to get in here to tell you the truth before he expanded uh, into everything else but you just saw how good we are and when I'm having that yeah, oh, I love that, Ruffy. You could have read that better, by the way. That was absolutely magnificent. We tried that with Tam. It took five takes. We thought, Ruffy, <laughs> just you do it. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, enjoy your football this weekend. One of the guys that Ruffy knows is going to all four uh, quarterfinals in the Scottish Cup. Amazing. Who's going to be in the draw uh, after Monday night's game between Dundee United and Celtic? Only time will tell. Good luck to all the teams. Uh, join us if you can on Monday. Uh, we'll be back here, Ruffy, myself. Uh, Tom and Alison McConnell. Until then, have a great weekend.